So, hello. Um, really nice for you to show up because it's not going to be a technical talk, so it's not going to be a flashy talk or anything, but I have animations, so if that's any consolation. Um, the Vulcan driver for thing, yeah, it's true, but on the other hand, uh, that's more important, so it's a really lesson in fertility. Um, these slides are linked, I think, in the description. Um, they only work on Firefox, so have fun. Uh, Okay, let's start with that. Uh, I will tell you who I am, um, what roughly a Raspberry Pi 4 is, if anybody hasn't heard that, a few things about uh, at least what I think I have learned about Meso 3D. I think a few things I have hopefully learned about uh, Gallium V3D variant, uh, then this strange driver that I'm currently writing and about possible features. Um, so who am I? My um, name is Andreas Beckmar, I have a GitHub, I have a Twitter. I uh, work at Otto, that's an e-commerce company in Germany. Um, and back in 2017, I've worked at, uh, in, in games. So we did this, this game and this game. Um, you see down here, uh, the platforms were Android and Horizon, which is basically Nintendo Switch. Um, and the interesting thing is, uh, for both these platforms, uh, you in 2017 you could write uh, your games in, or well, you could render in Vulkan. So that's what actually these games did. So you had here uh, a big Vulkan layer where you uh, would render out. And uh, for Horizon, it's a little bit different. Uh, the Vulkan layer is a little bit uh, smaller, and you have this NVM, which is uh, specialized, uh, and uh, I think NVIDIA variant. Um, yeah, and we shipped that, and you can play this game now on Android and uh, on the Switch, if you want. Um, and that's when I personally got into Vulkan, or got introduced to Vulkan. Um, we were, I think, one of the first Vulkan games that were out there. And, um, yeah. So what I'm doing now, I mean, uh, there's the Raspberry Pi 4. Um, so what I'm doing on the user space, uh, what I need to do, basically, I need to make a C ABI, which uh, will help of Mesa, um, which uh, implements all the things that uh, Vulkan driver would uh, assume. So um, to do that, um, I don't want to write everything from scratch. So uh, I would like to uh, utilize what the kernel or what in the kernel already is. That's the V3D driver, which uh, basically can handle the um, hardware of the Raspberry Pi 4, which is here this uh, video codec 6. Um, and yeah, that code is already there. So without that, it would even be more hard. harder. Um, yeah, uh, if you want to look at the source code of my patches, you can go here and see what a moron I am or, or anything. I mean, I'm really starting new at this, so there, uh, you don't have to have any big expectations because it's just random stuff. Um, why am I doing that? I started uh, earlier with that. Basically, um, we have for example, Raspberry Pis at work, um, we use them as dashboards, RAM boards. Uh, we even try to uh, use Microsoft Teams with that. And what you really notice with um, Raspberry Pis or the smaller PCs, if you will, is they don't have too much of power. So every bit of power that you can have, um, be it in the GPU or the CPU, you want to have. So. Um, Personally, I would say it would be perhaps really beneficial to have Vulkan to get uh, all the overhead from OpenGL out. But that's just a theory. I don't know whether this is actually good. Um, personally, I've just never been really fond of OpenGL. I've dealt with it a little bit, but Vulkan is rather more my alley. But it's more explicit. Um, I've, from my experience, I've most experience in C++, Go, and uh, C. So basically, uh, that makes writing um, for Mesa, I think, doable. Um, and I have uh, currently uh, a little bit more than one hour of commute uh, every day. So I have free time with my hands. So hey, why not? Uh, in the future, of course, uh, the, the hip talk, we will hear, I think, tomorrow. Uh, there's some web GPU, and people try to do some abstractions. 
uh, if I heard this correctly, on top of Vulkan, for example. So maybe it will be a web GPU on, on Raspberry, who knows. Uh, yeah, Raspberry 4, I mean, was released 2019, has these two HDMI outputs now, it's a little bit more beefy. Um, everybody has heard every complaint about it, so uh, I will not uh, repeat that here. Um, basically, uh, it should be able to support Vulkan 1.1. Um, the CPU can actually do uh, 64 bits. Um, the video core cannot, as far as I know. So um, uh, currently, um, I even have uh, 46 bits of the driver. Um, I have not tested them yet, but I would assume that there might be some problem somewhere because uh, people just assume that uh, an int is 32 bits or whatever. Um, who knows? Or vice versa. Um, and basically, the, the video core is a tile renderer, so we have the spinner thing, which goes to the renderer, and you render a tile out. I'm not the expert, uh, I, not a single expert. I mean, experts are sitting here probably who can explain it way better than me. So, um, and I thought, uh, what do I, or what did I have to learn? And that's basically summed up here. So I started looking at that, at the new hardware, and was saying, okay, um, what is what's already there in terms of software, infrastructure, whatever. So you have here the, the V3D, uh, Eric is maintaining that. Um, you have the VC4 for the uh, video core 4, which is the Raspberry Pi 3. Um, I think Eric is maintaining that, but I have no idea, quite frankly. Um, and then it gets interesting, because if you look at the performance testing uh, at Kronos, there is actually a Broadcom driver in there. Uh, and Broadcom, uh, I have this from good sources, that they internally really have a Vulkan driver, but apparently they have no plans on releasing that to the public. So, I don't know. Okay, um, that one, I mean, that's what I am doing. I named it V3D, VK, uh -huh. um, and I'm basing that on uh, Method 3D. There is the other one uh, which Eric started um, before he left, I think, uh, Broadcom, uh, and he named that V3DV, I think. Um, it's also based on Mesa, um, but didn't really compile as far as I remember. <coughs> and for the, uh, the older hardware, there's RPI VK. Um, I don't know what uh, the name of the guy is, but at least um, he continuously every few months does something on that and yeah, makes some progress, I guess. So uh, that's currently what the, the landscape we have um, and more to that later. Uh, yeah, so what did I learn from Mesa 3D? Um, I think, and I can be wrong, uh, the, the biggest part of Mesa seems to be Gallium, which is basically the, the OpenGL um, uh, yeah, driver or variants. I don't know how to, to describe that. Um, there is a bit of infrastructure for Vulkan. It's not uh, nearly as much as for Gallium. Um, might be intentionally, I don't know. Um, the, the big problem is um, you cannot really differentiate currently between common, between Gallium and between Vulkan because uh, it's uh, the code feels like it uh, grew hysterically. Um, so uh, basically means that uh, a lot of common uses Gallium. So you do, it's really hard to write your Vulkan code um, without putting Gallium in it. So um, I think there is some cleanup uh, on the way currently, but currently it's not really clean. So, um, uh, and that reflects in, in the build system. Uh, yeah, Gallium V3D supports video code 6, so Eric did, as far as I know, all the necessary changes to have basic support. So, um, which is really good for me because I can look at the code and try to figure out what it does and port it then to Vulkan. Um, and I already said, without Gallium, it's really hard uh, to get a Gallium out, let's say. Uh, you know. Uh, Vulkan infrastructure, um, what I noticed is Vulkan drivers have a monolithic, uh, your driver, private H, 
I don't know what the reason for that is, uh, but it's not nice uh, for people like me who have a small Haswell CPU and have to recompile a whole driver each time. Um, so I did not follow that approach. I have smaller headers um, because I cannot really, I mean, I have limited time every day. Um, having big headers is, I don't know, might have some reason, but it's not uh, the reason I understand. Um, and sim finding symbols in this gigantic header is not really fun. Um, the, the last uh, infrastructure thingy I saw was that uh, the formats um, are now moving out of Gallium into the common. Um, I think uh, not everything is outside of Gallium yet, but it's slowly moving. So it's getting, it's getting better. That's the good thing. Um, and I complained already today, I will complain again. Um, the problem I at least had and have to a certain degree with Meza is it feels like a cult. So if you're in that, that's great. Um, but if you're new to that, you have a problem because uh, there is all the things you need to do or you would like to do, it's not described or you just need to be in it. And uh, it's really hard to get in it. Um, but also I think uh, people are getting aware of that a little bit more. Um, then there's this build system. Um, I'm wearing the, the Basil shirt, not because I think Basil is so bad, because I think Basil is way better than Mason. But uh, here, Mason is probably okay, um, but it's just not great. Uh, isolation and all those things. Um, you really see that uh, it's not as clean as it could be. Um, on the other hand, it works, so yeah, you have to deal with that. So um, aside from the, the Gallium V3D part, um, there's also uh, a part where uh, is a general Broadcom library, which is not uh, in Gallium. And that's basically uh, you put XML in uh, with a magic Python that we already heard of. Um, then you get hell combination units for the variants out. Currently, I'm just interested in the lat latest, um, so it's not that much of a problem for me. Um, but for the V3D uh, in Gallium, um, they really do a lot of work to support all the different generations of hardware they have. Um, problems, uh, we have problems documented in the codes. If you're really interested in how the hardware behaves, it's uh, here and there and everywhere, basically. So um, basically what you ha will have to do um, to really understand it and uh, try at least uh, is to read through all the, the source code and try to really pick up all the nitty gritty that uh, some uh, developer documented. Um, and I'm not sure, I couldn't really find it. There's different documentation, uh, how ready compute already is or not. Um, and I still have to figure that out for V3D. Um, for Gallium, so that's the next layer, basically, which uses the, the Meso library. Um, this is, I think, a pretty standard Gallium um, variant. Um, I don't know, I don't understand everything from Gallium, so bear with me. Um, the only thing that I found, found kind of notable is uh, that they have some abs macro abstraction for uh, setting the, the, in this case, is the, the binner commands. Um, where you're not um, setting the, the single uh, bytes, but you rather go ahead and set, uh, set the structures, and then it's a macro magic that uh, converts that uh, to the, the actual bytes. Um, under the hood, it uh, also handles the variants, so uh, hardware specific things. And uh, to me, it makes the code more readable. Um, it uh, kind of trust that the compiler does enough optimizations for that to go away. I'm not sure. I don't trust compilers so that much, um, but it's it's okay. I think um, the other uh, really beneficial thing is uh, to me at least, who who gets uh, new into the the whole topic, is that I can uh, read the code more easily. I think, and that's really beneficial if you compare it with Fredorino, uh, and they do, as far as I know manual bytes, and uh, it's a little bit clumsy to read for, at, for them. The cons are, to me, uh, yeah, the, the macros. I had a bug once in, in that code or around the code, and debugging with that or tracing um, is not so fun, but it's doable, so yeah. Um, 
there's maybe some performance on the table, but I, I don't know, I haven't measured. Um, and uh, OpenGL is this dirty fla flag, implicit effect, uh, effect handling, uh, missing parallelism at times, for V3D at least. Um, that's just, uh, I think, OpenGL uh, implementations. So it, it's not really that bad, but it could be improved. And Vulkan is, if not anything, to improve on OpenGL. How did I start? Uh, um, basically, at least I just decided where to steal code. Um, I steal code, um, I implement what uh, I need to change, and I jump back to two. So I steal. So basically, um, if you look at the drivers, everybody is stealing from everybody. Um, I think Envy was the first one, it's the first Vulkan driver, and we're slowly copying code and trying to make it a little bit better at each iteration. Um, and that works not that bad, let's put it that way. Uh, it's not original, but hey. Um, myself, so um, at times uh, I got sick of writing code and then I was like, oh, yeah, let's do a SEM platform or the, the CI. So I have uh, in GitHub, uh, I release uh, snapshots, I uh, have uh, assets age to test, I have the, the CTS, um, which I run periodically, and I have a CI on cloud build because I don't really know how to interact with the whole uh, GitLab CI. Um, perhaps I should look into that, but uh, yeah, uh, works pretty great in cloud build. Um, so the timeline is roughly, so I started in, I don't know, um, probably somewhere summer. Um, then in the, around here I had uh, the Vulkan info running, so the basic infrastructure. Uh, for reporting the features and things. Um, I had a first CTS passing in October. Um, then uh, somewhere in November, I set up my CI. A uh, few days after that, I released just snapshots and there's just no really sense, or not that sensical, let's put it that way. And somewhere in, in January, I had at least uh, 64 CTS uh, passing, so that's not great, but it's enough uh, for me, let's put it that way. Um, meanwhile, I also had uh, to prepare a talk here. Um, I, uh, if you uh, remember, I uh, began working with the NV as a, a template. Um, I switched to Turnip uh, instead because uh, NV has uh, already a lot of uh, optimizations and uh, they are hard to translate to my hardware. So I'd rather need, or rather use Turnip now as my base. Um, and currently I'm trying to figure out how compute shaders work, whether uh, the infrastructure is already there or not. And that will keep me busy uh, for some time, I guess. The roadmap, uh, the one or the other will have read about uh, Egalia. So they are working since I think two months or more. Um, on their own variant of the, the Vulkan driver. Um, we already talked uh, together and uh, we will try to figure out how other people might uh, work on their drivers. So um, it might be the case that I'm throwing all the code away that I wrote, that's possible. Um, uh, if we are really lucky, then we might be uh, interested or able to implement or move some of the code uh, to them. Um, but nevertheless, I hope uh, the, the road forward is still um, more coding, getting the, the driver uh, into better shape. And yeah, for me, it's just um, test suites, uh, getting them to run and at uh, some point, hopefully have a driver. On the CTS, uh, I would personally be really interested about having a mapping between uh, the tests and the API calls. So you could uh, tell, okay, all API calls uh, from, I don't know, uh, creating pipelines or anything are done. So that part of the, the API is just, uh, should work as intended. So, uh, yeah, and with that, I try to breeze through all of that. Um, and uh, now, questions, please. What is this very Sorry? It's very quiet. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, <coughs> now, uh, we were going to talk about this in 
No. <laughs> no, I could. Uh, what I could do is uh, I could uh, show you, if all goes well, how the the CTS runs. But that's not really interesting, I think. So uh, no, um, and that's explicitly uh, a thing that uh, I have a different approach. So the Igalia guys, uh, if you have seen the news, uh, they have a triangle rendering. So I don't care about rendering. I only care about testing. So. Um, for me, it was like, I don't care if I need five years for that. I don't need uh, or 10 years. I just want to learn about these things. So I'm more about, uh, okay, I will use the tests and try to comply with the tests and uh, try to figure out what I have to do to um, appease the tests or appease uh, the APIs. Yeah, I, I think it should be there. Um, the the yeah. So the question, sorry, um, was uh, whether the the CTS or my question was whether the the compute shader was already uh, in place, and um, the the comment was that it has to be in place because uh, OpenGL ES uh, three one one. Uh, needs them anyway, um, and I think that's correct. Um, the other way around is that the documentation is not correct. So um, probably one of the documentation uh, problems. Yeah, sure. Um, so the question was how Many, many, many days I have put in it. A completed driver. So um, then the question is rather uh, how long we, will we probably take for a completed driver? And the, the news from um, the, the Raspberry Foundation was don't hold your breath. Um, and I think that's realistic. So um, there's a pretty good chance um, that this might take a year. Um, and I think a year might be realistic since the, the Galia guys uh, work full time with two people on that. So if we already get a few other people uh, to, into that part time or whatever, I think a year might be realistic. Not full fledged uh, feature, comp uh, but I think workable. Perhaps, uh, I don't know, uh, open arena. Let's say open arena should be doable in a year. Oh, um, so the question was whether that work is uh, any good for any uh, older versions, and the answer is maybe. Um, so uh, there's currently a lot of handling in the Gallium V3D, and at least in my code, I threw all that out. So if you would integrate uh, similar handling in the Vulkan, it might be actually. Um, the other thing is, uh, I think there's hardware-wise one or two things that are not sufficient for the, the uh, Raspberry 3. Um, so it might not be totally there, but perhaps enough fish. I don't know. Um, on the other hand, uh, there's this uh, RPI VK driver, um, which is not based on Mesa. Um, and I think may it may be uh, doable if you get uh, that person for example interested in doing that then there may be some progress yeah <coughs> anyone else sure. do you commit to a raspberry pi uh so if i understand correctly whether i develop with a raspberry pi or whether you commute with a raspberry 
Oh, no, oh yeah, uh, sorry. Okay, the question uh, really was uh, whether I commute with a Raspberry Pi, and I have thought about that. Um, but no, uh, I, that was in a slide here. Uh, I have SSH access through my firewall, and I execute that remotely on my Raspberry. So, uh, yeah, it works. And time's up. So, thanks.